Welcome to Bilingual Analytics. My name is Roland. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use Bilingual Analytics Personal Expense Tracker. Before I even begin, let me know in the comments below how many of you have some sort of a New Year's resolution related to money. I believe the most challenging financial topic for many people is to see how much money they spend. We all receive our salaries to our bank accounts and I reckon most of us hardly use cash anymore. Meaning that it's not too easy to visually see how much money we got and how much money we spent so far. While I'm not a financial advisor, I can guarantee that if you start visually representing your expenses and use a nice looking expense tracker, you will be in a much better position to start saving up much more money. In this guide, I'm going to focus on how to use this report, how to personalize it and what you need to do to set up everything. You either arrived here from YouTube or directly from the report. One thing is for sure, you are in a good place. In subsequent videos, I will also show you how the sausage gets made. If you would like to know more about the measures, the data with streaks and other bits in the report, feel free to check out those tutorials as well. Once I record those, I'll add them to the info box below and at the top right corner. But until then, if you like this report and get some interesting ideas out of it, or manage to save more money than ever before, please consider hitting the like and subscribe button and share it with your loved ones or friends. You can even tell me in the comment section below what you like the most about this report. But enough of that, let's jump over to my PC and see all of the steps you need to do before utilizing the report. First of all, you have to download three files. The link to this is available under my blog post. Once you fill in the details, you will receive an email that will point you to this OneDrive folder. Under the expense tracker folder, you will find the PBIX file. This is the Power BI report file. You will also find an Excel file, which is going to help us with the raw data. And lastly, a README document. That README file contains more details on how to download Power BI, how to get started. If you have never used Power BI or you are sharing this with someone who never used it, make sure to share the README as well. Let's start with the Excel file as we are going to use that as our starting point. On the first sheet, you can start personalizing the report. Type in your name and the different expense categories that make sense to you. For this demo, I have already added 8 unique expense types, but you can have as many as you want. Also, make sure to add emojis to all of these, as we are going to use these emojis when it comes to visually representing your data. Once you fully personalize this sheet, you can head over to the report page. As I mentioned before, most of our daily transactions are done by a credit or debit card. This means that if you log into your online bank or net bank or whatever it might be called in your country, you should be able to export every transaction. Those exports are at least going to contain three key fields and those are date, some sort of a comment or narrative on where on what you purchased and lastly the amount. These details can be added to this Excel file, your expense report. On top of that, if you pay for things in cash, you can also manually add those lines to have a full picture of your expenses. Remember how I told you to personalize expense categories on the first sheet? One of the reasons behind that was to streamline the process of allocating these transactions to certain expense types. As you can see in this demo file, I already have a drop down box in column D. And if you add or remove expense categories, those will either disappear or show up here. Additionally, what I found really useful for my expense tracker is an additional comment field. This is where I can add whatever extra information I want to add. I found it better to keep the bank export as it is and use an additional field to enrich this report. It makes my life easier when I'm looking for a specific item. With that said, we have covered how to use the Excel file. Just a quick recap. This is going to help you to personalize the Power BI report as we all have different expense types and different preferences when it comes to how we want to see our report. Then you can think about the report sheet in Excel as your database. While Excel is not a database, it's something that we all have installed on our PC. And if you don't have it, you can also use Excel online, which is free. But now let's head back to my PC and see what we have in Power BI. Let's start by pointing this Power BI report to the Excel file that you have just updated. 
instead of going through lots of unfriendly code updates. I made it easier for you. All you need to do to ensure that this report picks up the Excel file is to click on Transform Data and Edit Parameters. There is only one parameter in this file, which is the file location. To be more precise, the folder where you save the Excel file. So if it sits in your download folder, just copy paste the folder name here and hit OK. After that, just click on Apply Changes and you should see your name popping up here in the title. You see, it wasn't too scary at all. And now you have your own expense tracker Power BI report that you can update as frequently as you wish. Let me walk you through the different report pages and elements on these pages using the dummy data that I put together for this video. There are two report pages, expense tracker and expense analysis, and three tooltip pages, those that start with TT. I'm not going to explain how those tooltip pages were made, that's out of scope for this video, but I'm going to guide you on how to best utilize this report. The main goal of this report page is to see historical data. We are going to focus on long-term financial success, so feed in as much data as you can. There are four main visual elements and four KPIs or key performance indicators on this page. Each of them serves a different purpose to help you to gain better insights into your financial situation. The first one at the top left shows you monthly expense split into distinct categories in a stacked column format. This visual helps to understand how much you spend and why there might be too many categories to easily see splits or ratios within a month. You can immediately see that for this dummy dataset, rent is the most dominant expense type. It also helps to see trends as you can see your total expenditure by month. The second visual, savings by month, is probably the most useful if you have very little information about how much money you put aside or how much you overspend in a month. Green bars are going to show you when you save money and how much, while the red bars are going to show you when your spending was more than what you earned. I think this is a super powerful and easy to understand visual. Heading over to the right hand side, we have a smart narrative or a written summary. I know that for many people just looking at numbers could be overwhelming, so I wanted to have a written summary as well to ensure that the right information and the most critical information can find their way to the report user. The bold and underlined items are going to adjust based on the numbers that you added to the Excel report. And at the bottom right, we have the top 5 expense categories with their spendings. By default, this is going to show you the icons you added to the Excel file, but if you prefer text, just click on the text button here. Just keep in mind that if you are in Power BI Desktop, you have to hold your control button and then click. Also, if you hover over a certain item, you can see how much you spend on that item from your income. Lastly, there are four KPIs on the top, indicating how much income you had over the period, your total expense, your savings or overspend, and savings to income ratio. Just a reminder, on this report page, we are focusing on long-term trends in our financial position. And if you are not sure how these visuals can guide you to better savings, click on the info button at the top right corner. It will show you which one does what. To close it, just click on the grey areas and you will back in the report. Alrighty, we covered the first report page, the tracker, which helps users to see long-term financial situation and hopefully you will be able to draw some insights from this report page. I can tell you that for us, seeing how much we spent on eat out, let's say on Uber Eats or going out to a restaurant, was a real eye-opener. Don't get me wrong, we knew that it is not cheap to order food but seeing how much we spent on it compared to our income was a shocker. With that said, most of the time what really helps is to compare spendings from a previous period. This is exactly what a company would do, so why shouldn't we all do the same thing, right? I mean, from one year to another, we can have extra expenditures, let's say when the family is growing or buying a new car, home, etc. But generally speaking, most of the expenses, or at least within a certain category, should more or less remain the same. That's why I added the expense analysis page to this report, to reveal how much more we spend or spend this year than last year. 
So let's head over to that page and explore the details. On this page, you find three main visual elements and six KPIs. All of them are focusing on the year-to-date numbers. Year-to-date means that we summarize everything from 1st of January till today in a given year. Let's start with the KPIs this time. They follow a somewhat similar pattern. The leftmost numbers in orange show you how much income and expense you had last year year-to-date. In the middle, you will find year-to-date income and expense, while on the right side you can find how much your income and your expenses have changed. This tells me that in this dummy dataset, income has increased by 4%, while expenses have increased by 18.6%. Let's talk about the visuals. At the top left corner, we have a last year year to date to year to date comparison by expense category. Again, by default you will see icons, but within a click of a button you can switch to text. Following the color coding logic, we have for the KPIs, last year is shown with the orange columns and this year is represented by this beautiful bluish aqua color. Additionally, you can also find how much more or less you spend within each category. And if you hover over a bar, you will find the top 5 individual expenses or line items listed. Let's see what we have for car expenses. Petrol is roughly the same, but this year I already spent 50 bucks on car wash. Once you fill in the extra 5 transactions, here you will be able to find the most expensive individual transactions really quickly flagging those big ticket items where you might want to consider spending less, if you can. Below this we have a monthly spend comparison. There might be some seasonal impacts in your spending habits, let's say a yearly winter skiing trip or a summer holiday with the family. These one-off, usually expensive items could have a significant impact on an individual month, so seeing how much you spend month by month could help to normalize the numbers. In this visual, orange represents last year's data and aqua shows this year's number. One of the many things that report creators can do to help users in understanding reports quicker is using consistent colors and color coding. On this page when you see orange, you can be sure it represents last year, while blue means this year. Once again, these visuals are going to help you to easily identify dates and expense types when there was some sort of a large expense. You may remember these expenses when you had to finance them, but are you sure you will remember them in 2-3 months time as well? This report will help you to see the bigger picture. And if you hover over the columns, you will see each expense type and how much you spent on them in last year and this year. So if I hover over January, you can see that rent has increased a bit, but there was a huge increase in the other category which is driving the increasing expenses for the month of January this year. In combination with the visual above, users can have a really good feel on what's driving their expenses and where to save money, if possible. Lastly, we have another written summary on the right. As I mentioned on the expense tracker report page, for some user it is heaps easier to read a written summary and then explore the numbers, rather than the other way around. Here you will find quick insights about your income and expense changes, the expense category that you spend most of your money on, and some interesting numbers about your financial well-being and a short explanation on what that savings to income ratio means. And of course, another info button at the top right corner in case you need a quick reminder about each element on this report page as well. If you add more data to the Excel file and you want to refresh this Power BI report, all you need to do is click on the refresh button on the ribbon and it will import all the newly added numbers. Wow, you made it. Well done. I can tell you, if you watched the video this far, you are already in a better position than the one you were in before. I call it dedication. I mean, you are dedicated to getting your financials sorted and saving more money in the new year. Or new years as you can use this report as long as you like. As I mentioned in the intro, today I only wanted to focus on how to use this report, so I'm not going to cover what you can find on the three tooltip pages. This video is probably already long enough. If you would like to learn how I put this report together, make sure to come back later as I plan to record shorter videos about how you can fine tune each and every one of the visuals. Once they are available, I'll also add them to the info box below and to the top right, 
right corner. You can always come back to this video as the link is added to the report. Just click on Bilingual Analytics logo at the top left corner. Or check out the README file that you can also freely download from the blog post. And now I'm handing this over to you to enjoy, learn about and increase your financial well-being. If you like the report and got some tips, tricks out of it, please make sure to let me know by commenting below this video. I would be keen to hear what you like about it. Thanks for tuning in today. I hope that you learned something new and interesting from today's video and you will be able to implement this for your reports. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons before you leave or before you watch one from the above tutorials. Until the next one, see ya!